Aloha and welcome to this presentation on the Boyer Model and You. This is a multi-part journey into research for the busy faculty member at the University of Phoenix. We are going to take a look at the Boyer Model, break it down to see how it can apply to you as someone who has a busy life between teaching and working and other obligations, and examine ways that you can articulate the research that you may well already be doing. To begin, let's look at the five W's. We are going to be looking at the Boyer model this morning and breaking it down into its four domains. Why are we doing this? Because as you know, the Higher Learning Commission requires that all faculty, especially those who are conducting instruction for graduate level students, conduct research in an ongoing basis. And this HLC requirement is currently in force as you know, the university has been examining levels of scholarship and will start a close examination of every faculty member's scholarship as noted in their faculty profile. The good news for you is that you may already be doing research. And this, of course, is applicable to all faculty at the University of Phoenix. Indeed, faculty who teach at the university level across the country. And it's good to know that in the Boyer model, research doesn't necessarily only have to take place within the university confines. It certainly can take place in the classroom, but research can also be conducted at work or within your community. So to begin, the Boyer model consists of four different domains. This is relatively important for us because this is a means to extend research beyond the traditional model of discovery, which is conducting research uh, and publishing. The Boyer model includes the scholarship of teaching and learning, the domain of discovery, and the domains of integration and application. Discovery is often found in more traditional settings like other research institutions, and this is the building of knowledge through traditional forms of academic research creating or identifying a research problem, getting permission to conduct a study, conducting the study, finding the data, and evaluating the data to come to an outcome. However, with Boyer, there are also three other domains that don't necessarily fit this traditional discovery method of researching. Integration is the interpretation, connection, and use of knowledge across disciplines. Integration helps researchers and, and faculty members to apply knowledge that they have gleaned across different disciplines and it really looks at research from an interdisciplinary approach. Thirdly is the domain of application. This is where researchers and scholars take knowledge and information and apply it in the goal of aiding society by addressing problems, identifying solutions, and looking at ways of helping society solve some of its basic problems. Finally, we have the scholarship of teaching and learning. And this is where the instructor and the facilitation that happens in the classroom can really be seen as part of scholarship. Here, it's the development of teaching models, practices, and approaches that help students achieve optimal learning. When we take a look at discovery, of course, there are academic settings where this will apply. Obviously, within academic confines, discovery is including creating or testing theories, getting grants to study disciplines, uh, or solving a research question. However, for you, the busy practitioner, discovery can include working on a research grant, solving a business question, conducting community fellowship or completing a study for a local organization. In this case, practitioner work through the discovery domain can include efforts in or governmental organizations, NGOs, labs, or libraries. Discovery examples can include published and unpublished work, as you can see. Published work includes, again, traditional discovery type offerings through peer-reviewed academic research or textbooks and chapters of textbooks. However, unpublished work can also include research papers which are conducted and presented in an open setting like a presentation. Unpublished works can include research projects, creative works, or 
reports for funding organizations. So there are a number of different ways that discovery can be extended beyond just the traditional research type experience. When we move along to the notion of integration, and again this is from the interdisciplinary perspective, academic work can include publishing liter literature reviews, completing meta-analyses, or critical reviews across disciplines. For the practitioner, looking at the domain of integration can include serving as an editor for a disciplinary publication, conducting creative work across disciplines, presenting content in radio or on television that again approaches interdisciplinary content or completing an evaluation for a real work program. And in this case, looking at the integration domain, practitioner work can include in local organizations, can be conducted online or again within your working community. Integration domain examples for published works include, again, peer-reviewed literature, critical book reviews, applied books or articles, again examining an interdisciplinary approach to discipline-specific knowledge, or publishing a meta-analysis. But unpublished works are also included as examples of scholarship. From the integration domain perspective, this can include professional development workshops that bridge disciplines, and this is one that I know many of our faculty members are do currently doing and will continue to do in the future. Unpublished works can also include lectures given to a broad audience. They can include subject matter guest speakers on shows or in different presentations, or acting as a consultant on an interdisciplinary project. Integration is one area that many of our faculty are currently engaged in. When we look at application, and this again is the domain that seeks to apply knowledge to solve societal problems, academic work can include serving on a department committee, writing a white paper, running a workshop for a group of faculty. For the practitioner, this can include leadership on an organizational board or formal mentoring of underlings, employees, or people in the community. Practitioner work can also include a community presentation wherein you share your expertise, and again, especially when this comes to looking at ways to improve society. In this case, looking at the application domain, practitioner work often occurs in the local organization, community organizations, or organizations that are discipline-specific. When we look at published versus unpublished works that are particularly relevant to the application domain, published works can include white papers for local organizations, articles discussing the link between academic and practical problems, or publications in a professional organization magazine. But unpublished works can also serve to promote scholarship, and these can include serving uh, as an industry expert, looking at development or oversight for problems that connect universities to the field, advising, providing peer reviews, uh, or advising student leaders by promoting their professional growth. Finally, we take a look at the domain of teaching and learning. Academic work in this realm can include examining classroom experiences, publishing pedagogical content, doing classroom research, or teaching. But for the practitioner, this can include a critical review of teaching and learning focused work. It can also include examples like evaluating the efficacy of a local program for teenagers or members of the learning community. Practitioner work in the domain of teaching and learning often occurs within community learning programs, for example, uh, can also include other instructionally focused grants, and teaching and learning can be shared through blogs or other presentations. Published works for teaching and learning include standardized tests, obviously writing course textbooks, or publishing methods that include increased and enhanced teaching, publishing innovative instructional methods. But unpublished works are also acceptable forms of scholarship to include mentoring and teaching students, to include development of revised coursework, to help 
develop videos or resource lists for courses, to present new teaching methods, or to take a look at designing assessment systems. The purpose for showing you all of these different examples is to help you reflect on your efforts that you have done or that you plan to do in the future that can be considered scholarship as they apply to the four different domains of Boyer's. And the wonderful thing to think about is that scholarship is everywhere. The Boyer model is practical because it demonstrates that faculty engage in scholarship not only within the university, but also outside of it. Scholarship in the Boyer model can take place in colleges and universities, but can also be found in professional associations, private and public organizations, and within governmental departments and divisions. Where is it that you conduct scholarship? Do you have relationships or efforts in any of these types of organizations that be, can be considered scholarship? If so, please make sure you're noting them in your faculty profile. So what does this mean for you? Again, take a moment to review the Boyer model. Are there domains that you are currently practicing that maybe you haven't seen as scholarship, but now upon reflecting on the four domains that we've looked at this today, perhaps you are conducting scholarship, especially through your work with your community organizations. Do you have a potential research problem that you would like to investigate? These are all considerations for you to make as you reflect on the work that you've done for both your students and for your community. And as we continue on with our examination of the Boyer model and scholarship for the busy practitioner faculty, we will next take a look at possible research problems as they may apply to the work that you are doing. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to sharing more information with you in our next video.